Without counsel, plans fail, but with many advisors, they succeed. Hey, so today I want to talk about something that was uh, pretty big just for us in the last week in our business. We've, uh, for the last couple months, I'm trying to think, Andy, when we started, maybe uh, five or six weeks ago, we started reading a book together uh, as our leadership team in our brand. There's four of us that are on our le- leadership team. And we started reading the book, Get a Grip by uh, Gino Wickman. It's part of the EOS uh, system that's out there getting really popular with a lot of small businesses because it really simplifies what it takes to especially go, um, go from getting started to a million and kind of from that million to 10 million range. I feel like this system and this book especially is really good. Uh, the more popular book it's based on is actually called Traction, but I prefer the Get a Grip book because it's like a business fable that makes it seem a lot more relevant and easy to understand, uh, especially when you're working through it in a group. So we've been reading a, a chapter a week the last couple of weeks together, and I feel like it's really helped us get on the same page for our business. And so uh, whether you are a solopreneur and you're kind of just starting out or you do have, and especially if you have several team members on your team, I think this book and this system is something that you should pay attention to. Uh, Andy, I've read this a couple of times now, but you're reading it for the first time this last uh, couple of weeks, I believe, right? And so interested to hear your thought and kind of one of the biggest takeaways you've had and, and why you think this could be important for Amazon sellers to look at a system, either this one or something like it. Yeah. So, you know, initially, um, uh, because I've been in the corporate world for 15, 16 years. And so I've seen like different consultants come in and, you know, change up what we were doing in my previous profession. So I definitely was a little skeptical, uh, you know, is this just somebody's system? But man, it has been such a blessing uh, to be able to go through the book and then to be able to implement uh, the different uh, things that are in the book that we're going to talk about here. One of my favorite things, and I'm sure we'll get into it, Nate, is uh, oftentimes over the last three years, we have probably been way too reactive to our business and not proactive and kind of setting the course. And a lot of that was just because we were so busy operating. But oftentimes we would come to issues and we would talk them to death, but never really come up with a solution. So, you know, Bezos' famous word is complaining is not an option. And for us, it wasn't so much complaining as it was just really trying to figure out, hey, this is a problem, but never really being able to then pinpoint, okay, hey, what action step are we going to take? And for me, that's what's been exciting over the last three months, going through this book, having these level 10 meetings that we're going to talk about bringing up what the issues are and then boom, being able to take action steps right out of that meeting. So excited to be able to share with folks. And so just to be a little more clear, um, the the book is based on this entrepreneur operating system. And it's basically like a roadmap to how you could do everything from your your big planning down to literally your day-to-day meetings in an efficient way from a guy who's just worked with tons of companies over the past 20, 30 years, whatever it is. And and it really, like you said, has, uh, I felt like, applied well. And what I like about this Get a Grip book is, you know, we laugh with each other, but they give, um, they, they really characterize the the um, characters pretty extreme, right? To make it obvious the point that he's trying to get across. But it's funny going through because you do see um, both in yourself and in other people, uh, you know, in these characters in the fable book, uh, you see yourselves and it kind of makes you reflect and, and do some internal uh, discussion on, on how can we improve. So um, w- what we're going to talk about today is the level 10 meeting. You said that there's a lot of different parts of the EOS system that I think we could talk about in future episodes. But today we want to focus in on this level 10 meeting. And, and so you already said it. I mean, what I like about this is a level 10 meeting happens every week. We personally do it on Mondays in the morning, again, with the four of us on our leadership team. We're kind of rounding out our leadership team. So maybe someday we'll, we'll expand that number. There's not a, a magic number there. And if you um, do just work by yourself or you work with you and a spouse or a partner, I think you can still have these level 10 meetings uh, even by yourself, right? You can basically just take this hour, hour and a half to reflect on what you need to get done. And we'll kind of break down the, the five or six parts of this level 10 meeting. But the other reason I really love the level 10 meeting is um, it's just a time for the four of us to get together and we're all seeing different parts of the business and we have an ongoing chat um, 
all the time, right? Every day we're chatting with each other. But when we get together, we really kind of lay it all out on the table and we see, we each see things differently. We each have different strengths and weaknesses. So when we go together, I think it really helps. One of, um, you know, a Bible verse I really love is Proverbs 15, 22. It says, without counsel, plans fail, but with many advisors, they succeed. And I feel like when the four of us get together in this level 10 meeting, we're seeing that we're seeing like different counsel advisors, and before this level 10 meeting, Andy, I mean, you you talk with a lot of other Amazon sellers, but it's kind of random, right? And you, you've always tried to get some form of counsel through mark, uh, networking and, and um, meetups and, and talking to other people. But um, I feel like since we started doing this um, a couple months ago, probably about six months ago, we, we started these level 10 meetings. We've had this counsel just among each other really ramp up. So any thoughts on that? And then I just want to break down these six parts of how we do this level 10 meeting, starting with just good news with each other. I'm trying to reflect on the past week, like a, a personal win and a work win in the past week. Yeah. So what we're about to bring to you is most people are like, oh man, another meeting, especially entrepreneurs. But these meetings, which for me in my life, it's never been uh, the case. I hate meetings. But these meetings now, I actually look forward to because I know that they're going to push our company forward. So let's get into what they are. Yeah. So uh, the level 10 meeting is supposed to be about 90 minutes. It could be 60, probably if it's just you, uh, an hour to reflect through these six parts. Number one is the good news. And it's supposed to be about five minutes. We struggle with keeping it to five minutes, Andy, but just walk us through. How do you feel like those first five minutes of, of good news go for you? Yeah. So, we, you know, we go around, we say, hey, you know, give us a personal win. Uh, and so whether, um, you know, you have a family or you're single, you just talk about what was cool personally. And uh, and then we say, hey, give us a professional win. Uh, so what in the last week in your department or on your team uh, have you seen or are you working on that's been pretty cool to talk about? So uh, and then we go around. I could be tempted to skip this if it was just me. Um, any, any reason what you can think of, of why this is important just to start off the level 10 in this way? Yeah, I mean, I think it just kind of breaks the ice. It gets uh, folks, everybody has to share. So it gets folks talking. And honestly, um, you know, numerous studies have been put out like, you know, positivity breeds positivity. And so I think just starting out with the good news is a great way to get the meeting going. Yeah. So after those first five minutes of good news, we get into five minutes of our scorecard. That's where we're breaking down our key metrics when it relates to the marketing, the operations in the finance of the company. To be honest, we're still working on this. I feel like we're working out King Center scorecard, um, basically coming up with the eight to 15 most critical numbers in your entire business. Um, you know, so, so numbers like your revenue numbers, like, um, your, your a cost, maybe on Amazon or your tacos and ideally things that are, are leading indicators, not just lag measures like revenue, but stuff that's going to impact down the road weeks or months down the road, because you're doing that right. Andy, what do you think on the scorecard and your thoughts on, you know, just going through that as a team? Yeah, no, it's good. Again, what you're trying to do is identify those issues uh, as a team, uh, collaborate and see what those issues are. And so just the four of us, I think, being together on a weekly basis really brings some unity to what we are seeing as, you know, really the bottlenecks in our business that, you know, we may be experiencing that's preventing us from growth. In, in the thought process is, and I think they give the example in the book, if you had to be somewhere uh, on an island on vacation and once a week only get one update from your team and you couldn't talk to them at all and you could only see these 8 to 15 numbers, would that help you still get a pulse on the business and be able to uh, understand what's going on? I think, again, we're still working on that ourselves, getting the right numbers there. But having a scorecard where we can see those most important numbers has been super helpful. So uh, we go through the good news, the scorecard, and then we get into our rock review. And Andy, we actually just spent two days last week going through our fourth quarter rocks, which we won't dive into that whole process because that's a whole separate meeting. Uh, but just walk through kind of that rock review and why that's important to to check in on that uh, every week throughout the quarter. Yeah. So these are your, you know, your bigger goals that again, you have identified that is going to help grow your business and uh, and so, you you know, in order to meet those goals, the four of us uh, as the leadership team, we have to really look at them um, and see, you know, where are we at? Um, are they on track? Are they off track? 
you know, was, was this an unrealistic rock maybe? Um, and, and so just being able to look at them every week, it, it keeps, it keeps it in your mind, top of mind, basically of where we need to go. Yeah. And I should explain rocks. I mean, those are the, the most important milestones essentially for your business. And I think every business at any level, even if it's just you, you should have three, um, in, in less is more typically, you know, based on all this advice I've heard, you should have like three main priorities for your business that quarter where you're going to say, Hey, if I can only do these three things, um, I have to do all my other millions of tasks day to day, but I need to get these three things done in order to progress. And it might be something like I need to make this key hiring decision by the end of the quarter. I need to narrow down my candidates or I need to take this specific training um, or it could even be I need to read this book like the Get a Grip book right by the end of the quarter. I think that's what we mean by these milestone or rock reviews and, and then just forcing yourself to look at them every week after I've identified the top three to seven things for your company to go forward. Uh, so after we go through our rock review, and again, that's just a quick discussion where we just say, is this on track or off track? Then we get into customer or employee headlines. Now, Andy, this one's tough because there's not a lot of customer headlines. A lot of times when it comes to e-commerce, especially if you're in arbitrage for private label, we as a team every Friday on, a, on an all teams call hit some of our um, best product reviews that come through for our brand. Uh, but a lot, a lot of times on these level 10 meetings, we're more focusing in on our team and uh, some of the employee headlines. Walk through why you think that's important. Yeah. So, you know, every business uh, as you grow and as you begin to add more people, uh, you know that um, with people, there's a great, um, uh, there's with people, there's a, a very high ceiling in order for your business to really expand and grow. You got to have people, but with people comes problems. And, and so, you know, managing those people, human resource issues, you know, as, as the business grows, it just happens on a weekly basis. So it's a good time that we can talk about not, not only folks that may be struggling that we may need to coach up and help, uh, but folks also that are just really crushing it. And, um, many times in these meetings too, we identify like, wow, this, you know, the ceiling on, on this person is incredible. And we may need to think about moving her into an expanded role, right? In the business. Yeah. And we, we actually identify someone within our team because their team's larger at this point that we think like out did a little bit outstanding the past week. And we like to recognize a person weekly. So we take time to do that. Again, you have to apply this to where you're at. If you don't have a lot of people on your team, you just might recognize something that you yourself did really good over the past week. And again, give yourself a little pat on the back and just take time to reflect on that. So after we spend about three to five minutes doing that. Uh, we just run through our to do's. So every week, uh, as we are looking at our rocks and, and getting into our issues list that we'll talk about next, we inevitably identify to do's that, uh, we need to, to get done between uh, that meeting and the next week's meeting and just a little bit of an accountability there. Right? So most people have some type of task that they have to get done. Uh, we try not to make this long. Usually each of us only have like one or two to do's for the week that are outside of our normal um, hundred things we need to get done. These are kind of special to do's that we want to hold each other accountable for between now and the next week. Uh, any, any, any touch on that? Have you felt like it's helped with accountability to have those to do's in there? Yeah, absolutely. Again, like, so I grew up playing sports, uh, my, my whole life and, and the teams that were the highest performing teams always had, um, you know, captains or the leaders on that team, they're really pushing each other. Right. And, uh, and pushing each other in an encouraging way. And we knew each other's strengths. We knew each other's weaknesses. We knew what we had to get better on, right? And so, you know, the best teams, again, were ones where we would check in and, you know, guys would come over my house and work on hitting, you know, or work on bunning, whatever it would be. And business and in this to-do list, I feel like it's kind of the same way. I actually was at the warehouse this morning uh, before doing this podcast, and I have a to-do uh, that is a quarter long to do. So it's a bigger one. And I sat down with the guys at the warehouse that often get calls from our customers. And I said, Hey, look, this is the project I'm working on. You guys are really close to our customers every day. Help me, um, help me brainstorm. And, and my specific to do is to come up with better changes for a really good selling product. So our product is really good, but there are things that we can improve on. So I said, Hey, let's just brainstorm. If we could have the best of the best, right? What are some features that we would add to this? 
And uh, and that all comes out of that meeting, right? And me knowing that you guys are going to hold me accountable for that to do. So I really appreciate and like that accountability. I like that. I'm excited to see uh, that list, what comes out from that. So um, just to review again, we go through good news, scorecard, a rock review, the most important things we need to get done for the quarter, customer and employee headlines, and then to-dos. And all that takes about 20 to 25 minutes. And then we get into the bulk of the meeting, really the most important part that you already referenced. And that's the issue list. And the EOS system um, calls it this IDS list where you're supposed to identify what the problem is or the issue. You're supposed to discuss it as a team and then solve it. And uh, again, it is different. It, it sounds so obvious, but it is a little bit different than I feel like most companies or people approach issues because normally you're kind of um, just spending way too much time discussing and never really come to a resolution at the end. And so we don't move it off the IDS list unless we've actually solved it. Um, and we're, we're adding stuff to the IDS list throughout the week um, or based on our um, maybe people problems or based on the rocks that we have for the quarter or our vision. And we're just spending a lot of time identifying, hey, what are the uh, first we look at all of our issues and then we say, OK, what's the top three ones that we should try to work on today? Sometimes we'll have an issue that takes a full hour to work through. And this week um, we just met yesterday, Andy, I feel like we got through like seven or eight issues. Like we were kind of just pounding them out and they were bigger ones, but we were going very quickly. So walk through, I mean, you already touched on it, but, but identifying, discussing, solving, um, where do you think I'm trying to uh, self-analyze our business? How do you think that's gone the last three months compared to, you know, last year, even as issues came up? Yeah. So it's all about the process. And I think now we have a clear understanding that when we bring up an issue, when it goes on the list, it is going to get solved. So we're going to have to figure it out, you know, um, and we're not going to continue to talk in a circle. Uh, like oftentimes, again, I've been in meetings where issues come up, right? And nobody will take ownership of, or nobody will say, okay, so-and-so, this is what we're going to do. And so just being able to talk through these, come up with a solution together, and then give very actionable um, points to whoever is going to have to solve it. That to me is the real deal breaker, I guess, in a meeting. And that's why I'm so, that's why I get so excited about these level tens. Yeah. I, yeah, I agree with that. In the last five minutes of the meeting or so, we just conclude by, um, and this part's a little bit, um, awkward or kind of hard to facilitate, but you just conclude by going around the table, um, or again, if it's just you self-reflecting, okay, how did this um, level 10 time uh, go and, and give a rating to it one to 10. And again, for me, it's a little bit awkward to try to facilitate that. But I, but I do think the times that we do that, um, you know, uh, Andy, you might give it a, a, an eight and, and someone else gives it a seven. And there's this opportunity to say why and to discuss on how we could get even better. And a lot of times it's just following this flow um, following the flow that we just laid out here a little bit tighter. And maybe when it comes to that IDS part, this, the 60 minute or so, the biggest part of the session were, did we discuss, um, and solve quickly and not go in a circle because, you know, we're saying that, but there are times where we still a little bit go in a circle back and forth and no one kind of figures out how to wrap up that issue. Um, so I think that's why we don't get perfect tens typically the last couple of weeks. Um, but the goal is to get to like, an eight plus average rating for your team. And I feel like we're getting better, but like anything, it takes time. And we, we've been doing it for a couple of months, which is um, like nothing, right? Some businesses have been doing this for years. And I think uh, like anything in your company, your business, in your career, uh, you're going to get better over time. Any thoughts on that kind of conclusion part? No, yeah, it's good. And you know, the times that we rate it lower is usually when we get bogged down and really trying to really just beating a dead horse. Uh, on an issue instead of saying, okay, let's take action on it. So now I think we're identifying that. I think each meeting gets a little better. All right, wrap us up because I mean, we're talking again about meetings. You already said that this is not the most, uh, not the favorite part of most people's, especially entrepreneurs, CEOs, what they're doing. But you know, why did we talk about this today? Just the importance of having this kind of cadence and rhythm and how you, how you think that most sellers should be approaching this, especially if they do want to, um, hit a million dollars in sales for a year or hit, you know, 10 million to get to that next level. Wrap us up on why you think this is important. Yeah. So there's a really good book. It's like a five minute read. It's called the tyranny of the urgent. 
And I think as a business entrepreneurs, again, whether you're just starting on Amazon, you're just acquiring inventory, getting it into Amazon as fast as you can, you know, or you're a growing business. And as you grow, you got continued issues where the urgent really begins to become what consumes you. And if you do that, then you have no direction and you're not, you know, you don't have the vision that you need and, and are guided by. And so having these type of meetings, right, everything always points to the vision that we have for the company. And it gives us that kind of mental space, right, to be able to solve the issues so that we're not always reacting. We're proactive and coming, coming up with solutions. Yeah. So again, the book is Get a Grip. Got it right here next to me because we've been going through it so much together as a team. Hopefully you can pull something from this level 10 meeting structure, make your own, follow the EOS system, read Get a Grip, or you know, figure out a way that you can develop this way for you and or your team to just solve issues every single week and get closer to your vision. All right, guys, make sure you're signing up for Amazing Freedom Insider at AmazingFreedom.com. Catch you in next week's episode of the Amazing Freedom Amazon Seller Podcast. See ya.